Welcome to another session of 6.5 on the Road. My name is Matt Kimball, Vice President and Principal Analyst with More Insights and Strategy. And today I'm here talking with Will Etherton, Senior Vice President of Infrastructure Engineering at Cisco. So AI, the AI era is upon us. And more specifically, the AI inference era is upon us. And with inference comes a lot of traffic. Now going back to this, as most folks think about AI, they think of one company, NVIDIA, with, with good reason. However, if I was gonna draw a parallel to NVIDIA in networking, it would be Cisco. And interestingly, Will, um, there's a strong partnership between Cisco and NVIDIA. And there's been a lot of news coming out of the two companies recently, right? Absolutely. Um, so talk to me, you know, Cisco and NVIDIA just announced, you, a few announcements, but one really big announcement around AI networking. For people that are watching at home and maybe are a little bit less familiar, kind of walk, can you walk us through that and talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, so first I'll just mention the partnership. Uh, you know, a year, year and a half ago, um, many folks would have never expected that NVIDIA and Cisco would have come together. The view would have been we were uh, going to be highly competitive and overlapping and that there wasn't a, a partnership to be had. But uh, what we've seen and, and what we had announced earlier this year and then followed through with announcements, including um, in the past week, has been that, you know, there's many types of Ethernet and that there's uh, the speed that these deployments need to happen across enterprise, no, uh, sovereign cloud, neo cloud, um, requires you know more more feet on the ground, and that's something that Cisco and Nvidia can do together. So what we announced last week were a couple things. Um, the big one was a new switch, which we all love switches and networking, <laughs> um, and this was uh, based on the Nvidia Spectrum ASIC, mm -hmm. uh, but it's built into a Cisco switch with the Cisco software on top of it, and that's really fundamental for yeah. our customers. Nvidia living within Cisco in perfect harmony with software. Yes, um, and and the key point there is that customers can use. Uh, all the software management tools that they've had experience with at Cisco and, and an ecosystem that has uh, tens of thousands of CCIEs and all, all of these, this training, yep. um, but they can do it with the proven um, technology stack for AI uh, that NVIDIA's provided. And so that was one key announcement last week and we were very happy we had Jensen drop by our booth and sign, sign the switch um, and we have uh, pre-orders for that. Uh, we just announced the orderability is turning on. So, you, so and just to be sure for the audience at home too, um, we're talking uh, Cisco Switch, Cisco Silicon, running and working with um, NVIDIA Silicon to drive and feed those GPUs as fast as possible, right? So yes. keep them fed and, and optimal performance nonstop. Yes, right? so there, and there's different combinations. So that new switch, the N9100, that's the NVIDIA Silicon and the Cisco software. And the key thing is that it's NCP reference architecture, which is the NVIDIA cloud partner. Yep. And that means that you can be part of that NVIDIA program while you're using the Cisco software uh, on that chip in the back end, the GPU to GPU. But with that said, there's also combinations with Cisco Silicon, Cisco software running for both the back end and the front end networks. And so the end goal here is a set of options that the customers can choose based on what their goals are, but all of them combined, the NVIDIA and Cisco ecosystem. So help me out with this. So you talk about the, um, you know, the cloud reference architecture. Yes. Right? What does that do for a customer that they maybe couldn't do before or they had to do more inefficiently before? What's, what am I getting at right. as a... As a so if I start with simple terms before, if you wanted to be in the NVIDIA ecosystem, you wanted to have that reference architecture approval for NVIDIA, there was one stack that had all of the components and software and it had to be done in exactly one way. Mm -hmm. The new thing with the Cisco cloud reference architecture um, is that it was based on the design tenets of, of NCP from NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. It was blessed or reviewed by NVIDIA, um, but it, it has Cisco switches with Cisco Silicon in there running a uh, essentially a connection between our switches and the NVIDIA NICs that are in the server. So server switch yep. server yep. can now run as one unit and it's again Cisco software ecosystem in that case with uh, with that reference architecture. So it's it's choice, um, it's still going th you know thousands, tens of thousands of GPUs, but it's alternate ways uh, to deploy that architecture. So optimal performance, I mean, you're in really kind of, you're bringing the best of both worlds into one single platform for consumers. Yes. You know, <clears throat> you, you say, you know, reference cloud or a reference cloud architecture, is this something that only applies to hyperscalers and neo cloud or is this something you're seeing enterprise pick up as well? 
Right, so the, the NVIDIA Cloud Partner reference architecture, yeah. which is the NVIDIA thing, that one's very much more Neo Cloud focused. Yeah. It was intended for that, and it's, it's more of that multi-tenant. Um, the, the Cisco Cloud reference architecture is generally just about a scale point from thousands uh, to tens of thousands of GPUs, and we absolutely have engagements with high-end uh, enterprises, for instance, Quants, uh, mm -hmm. have a lot of their own models, so they're yep. uh, candidates for this. We see life sciences as a growing area, um, so they'd be candidates. So those kinds of ecosystems where it may be completely in-house, there's no GPU being sold as a service, um, that absolutely is a target for the, for the cloud reference architecture. So kind of shifting a little bit, so um, this thing called Nexus Hyperfabric, yes. Hyperfabric uh, AI is coming, right? What's unique about this? Give us a 10,000 foot level, what makes it unique, kind of what benefits you get, and, and how does it change? If I'm, if I'm looking at building out that AI ready network, yeah. right? how does it help me? So uh, I'll start off and say that we have, you know, a long history with how to manage infrastructure. Um, I like to say that we've done it every wrong way there is possible <laughs> and a few right ways. Um, about 18 months ago, we looked at our data center uh, strategy and we said, if we were a startup and we were going to disrupt, you know, both Cisco and Arista, what would we do that was uh, fundamentally new? And we came to a approach that was, first of all, SaaS delivered, um, mm -hmm. but it was really around starting at the design process. I want to build a cluster with, you know, a thousand GPUs and I want to use vast data as an example and what kind of storage capacity I want to have. So I do a whole design and mm -hmm. then essentially I have an intent that's put in there. And at that point, it, it would uh, essentially compile that into a architecture and a bomb. You can then order. And then when it comes, everything from plug this cable into this box, oh, you got the wrong port, move yep. it to another port. It's, it's really that, um, it's really that uh, uh, I would say, Meraki approach for data center. Yep. And so we, we're just, we've been in beta. Um, we have a, a number of customers um, in the, the early version that uh, have, have gone to production. And we're very excited that, again, we have a, a long history with our Nexus portfolio, but this is a, a disruption uh, approach. So it just makes it so much easier for enterprises in particular. Yeah. To adopt AI. I really like that because as I talk to enterprise IT folks and as I speak to even kind of like larger, uh, the Neo Cloud like mm -hmm. kind of uh, customers, one of the things I hear is complexity, complexity, complexity. It's, yep. a, it's a huge barrier to adoption for AI in general. And there are a lot of elements to that, right? But a big element to that is networking. Yep. So the more frictionless you can make that deployment of that infrastructure that goes out, and by the way, every company, it seems, needs to upgrade their network to support these workloads. Yep. The, more, the, more, uh, the more frictionless you can make that, obviously the greater value, right? But that whole time to fir first yeah. token kind of um, metric that everybody seems to be trying to measure by goes down drastically. Yes. So I love what you're doing there. And I have to think that the feedback you've gotten to date has been pretty spectacular. It, it's pretty exciting. And actually, interesting enough, NVIDIA as we've gone through and dem demoed with them, um, they've been very excited because in their standpoint, they want to democratize and see as many GPUs out there as possible. Sure. And they do worry about the, the tail of enterprise. And so this approach, um, you know, can, can help a lot more companies. And maybe it's only 64 or 120 GPUs to start, um, but it's uh, it's approach that, again, is not only the network, but yeah. it also incorporates the servers and storage yeah. uh, with initial partner of Vast. Yeah, I yeah. love that, I love that. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, some of the work you've done with, with NVIDIA and kind of all the great work you're doing. As you kind of look forward, you know, maybe six months out, maybe a year out, maybe two years out, where do you see this relationship going? I mean, it's quite frankly, it's, it's very interesting that you see, you know, you started out this conversation with a year ago, who would have mm -hmm. thought, right? Um, and I would agree with that. And I'm just wondering, like, how much further can you take this? Because yeah. you are the two relative giants in the AI game yeah. for, you know, for neo clouds, for for enterprise, and even for commercial enterprise. Where does this go next? So first of all, it, when we put together the agreement, it's uh, intended to be a five-year base, and then we'll see where we're at. So it is a multi-generation. So uh, some of the the 
I guess simple things are as new silicon comes out, you know, 100T, 200T, we'll be revving our switches. As the algorithms evolve on how to get traffic end to end, um, that's something that uh, we will be, you know, sharing back and forth and ensuring that the software updates uh, handle that. Um, we've talked about there, there could be silicon aspects of, of shared uh, IP in some cases. Um, optics, and, and they've been very pushing uh, co-packaged optics very hard. We also have development that area. There's some, some opportunities for that. Um, so I'd say those are sort of the base technology. I would say at the higher layers, security is a big uh, addition into the cluster that oh, we've sure. been uh, working on. We have announcements that will be coming out next year um, in more of those areas. And I'd say the last area that I'm interested in, and right now I'd say we're more at an engineering level, is the multi-data center. And so this is hmm. something we've worked with. Yeah. Well, our, our history is routing and WAN and interconnection, um, but we've worked with hyperscalers, for instance, in multi-data center. I think as we start to see folks not just think about that from a, uh, a management, but a I might actually want to stretch jobs, which is yep. where the whole scale across topic yep. comes up. I, I think there we're still early. There's still R and D on how to really make that work. Um, we're doing work on that. Nvidia's put out some work on that. I think that's an area for collaboration and potentially leveraging. You know, there's many types of Ethernet, but some of the Ethernet switches that we have that have you know more deep buffer and you know have been for that sort of WAN uh, areas that that could be applied to. So again, I think there's um, one of the things I'm very excited is there's just so many. Uh, areas of R&D, and yeah. it's much more than here's a new silicon, let's build a box out of it. I love that, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's, it's kind of the two plus two equals five equation, right? I don't like to say one plus one yep. equals three, that's too easy. Um, Sounds good. A little bit more advanced. So one last question for you, um, it's kind of a bonus question. Mm -hmm. uh, silicon, not a lot of folks know this, mm -hmm. and not enough folks know this, I should say. Um, Cisco is not just a switch company, yep. not just a uh, networking and security company. You're also a silicon company, yes. right? Can you talk a little bit about kind of what you're doing in sure. that space? So you? you're right that not enough folks know yeah. that. Um, you know, silicon, uh, Cisco's had a long history of going back uh, 25 years probably of doing silicon. Um, in the last several years, um, we've gone pretty hard on everything from the high-end web scale, uh, multi tens of terabits, to things that would be used in service provider networks and enterprise. I think uh, it, it, an example here would be hyperscale, where mm -hmm. they are looking for, I would say, a top couple vendors. Um, and I think today it's safe to say that um, you know what you see most out there is Cisco, NVIDIA, and Broadcom yep. are the top three. Which that's one reason why many folks a year, year and a half ago would said you know oh, we'll yeah. never partner yep. is because it's a, a naturally competitive. But I think again, what in, where NVIDIA has been focused is on you know mainly the GPU to GPU. Yep. And while we have some overlap there, we've just seen so much more benefit of having the partnership and working through the occasional uh, co you know competition sure. kinds of topics. Yeah. Fantastic. There's so much to what you're doing and to what you said from a kind of the full stack from the silicon to the hardware to the software um, uh, and even to the security aspect that, you know, it's just it, and, and when you bring two giants together like a Cisco and an NVIDIA, it seems like not an unstoppable force. Yeah. Perhaps it is, but more importantly, truly that easy button for the Neo Clouds, but more importantly, that enterprise company uh, that you know, two years from now is going to be starting on their inference yeah. journey. Um, well, I think the whole industry really wants to see that this gets democratized out to enterprises. Yeah. And I think that is going to be a key area that we're you know poised to, to focus on. Um, in the meantime, while that's still early, uh, NeoClad is a, uh, continues to be a big focus. So, Will, thank you for taking the time to chat about the partnership between Cisco and Nvidia and how you're driving, you know, kind of driving away the friction for AI adoption at the largest of companies and readying the market for that next wave of adoption from enterprise. Truly a compelling story. And for those of you watching, thank you for taking the time to watch this episode of, of Six Five and, um, and building the AI network of the future.